I'm not in this for anything other than the truth. And you'll see that. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing those records. And as I said, I hope it includes all of the records. Just regard, not, not to Next question, you and your integrity, Next question. but I hope it includes everything. So getting on to the recommendations in the report, many of which you didn't have a chance to speak to in the presentation. How much, how much so time do you have? Yes. Yeah, so I, I, I tried to pull out a few that I had questions about. Sure. So one of the first ones that stood out to me was that you suggest that we minimize pre-voting. And I guess that, you know, you indicate that in part because of the complications on counting and the time and whatnot yeah. it, that then takes. My question is, instead of trying to minimize pre-voting, which for many people is the only way that they can exercise their right to vote, why not adopt policies and provide resources such as Monday counting that would enable, okay, that would enable folks, that would enable folks oh, to Monday exercise count. Monday counting, yes. Um, that, that would enable the locals to res the local clerks to be able to accomplish the task of getting those ballots counted without disallowing individuals who avail themselves of what you call pre-voting, what I would call ab early absentee voting, whatever you want to call it. I am, and ready, then second I am part, ready to respond right, to your question. Right, right. And then the second half of the question, can I ask the second half of the question? Because okay. it is, it relates. Okay, go ahead. So first part was why not I understand. provide the resources. Go ahead. Second piece, if we were to minimize pre-voting, as you suggest, who would be entitled to the right to pre-vote? Who wouldn't? What would that minimization look like that's not outlined okay. in your recommendation? Those are great questions. Well, thank you. You're welcome. As far as the, as far as the recommendation goes, um, it comes from the, the, the outline of it comes from the Carter-Baker Commission. President Carter, former President Carter and former Secretary of State James Baker, as I'm sure you're aware, led a commission following the 2000 election, especially the confusion that occurred in Palm Beach County in Florida. And they went about trying to find out, find ways to better run safe, you know, the, the fair, accurate, accountable, transparent elections that we're talking about. And their main recommendation of that was to say that mail-in voting mail-in voting is the source, is the opportunity, has the potential for a significant amount of fraud in it. Now, as far as the early voting, I listen, if, if you would like to sit down or write me a letter and, and we can discuss the contours of it, I'm happy to. I'm very happy to talk with you and work with you. I, as I stand here right now, I would be simply making it up if I said, ooh, I've got a perfect plan. I, I don't have a perfect plan, but I've got some ideas that I think are, are worth working on. And if you, you raise some good points, and I appreciate it. And maybe, even if it's just on this one tiny issue, Representative Subic, maybe if we can work together, I promise I won't talk. I'll just listen and take notes and then only talk if you ask me a question. Okay? I promise. That was, that was an interesting um, right, piece of that response. I'm going to, um, if you want to. Okay, put me back on the list because I do have questions about some of the other recommendations no, as well. I'm making well. that in good faith. Sure. It was, it was the way you said the last part was. What um, was that I would Anyway, it doesn't I matter. Can't. That's fine. That's fine. I, I can. I, you know, I don't get a lot of um, genuineness there, but I appreciate the offer. Representative Subek, I'm going to go to Representative. Murphy. By all means. Been patient. Thank you know, you. Madam Chair, just given the tone, I'm 55 years old. I am the son of a furniture salesman and a fifth grade Catholic school teacher. I am the first in my family to go to law school. I had many opportunities after law school in the private sector, working for insurance companies. I chose a half-time assistant district attorney job that paid $17,500 a year, which wasn't a lot of money in 1993 either. That's what it paid. Moving to a town that I had never been to before. I did it because I felt called 
to do justice for everyone. And whatever criticisms people have at me, they cannot say that I have not done justice in my career. So, please. I don't know why. That's all right. It's just the truth. We all pick our paths in life. You were the statewide president of NARAL. Uh, I was a prosecutor and a district attorney and a trial, a circuit court judge and a Supreme Court justice. So we all pick our different paths in life. I would just like to remind people that this is not a Spanish Inquisition. This was an opportunity for a report mm. that has taken a lot of time. I would really hope that regardless of your affiliation, <clears throat> you would treat people with respect. And we, we certainly are going to have to do a bathroom break at some point here. So that being said, I'm going to go to Representative Murphy.